Uh, I just want to first off welcome Senator Menendez and Senator Booker. It's uh, always a privilege to have you in our town. You know, I don't think there's another pair in Congress or in the Senate that. Uh, is this good looking? Well, yes, that's the, <laughs> but have served as both as mayors of urban areas, and uh, it's always great knowing that we have you two in Washington, uh, protecting the values of townships like Bloomfield. Um, Senator Menendez, we stood, I think what six, seven months ago, and we discussed the infrastructure bill. We discussed uh, lead pipelines that Bloomfield is in the process of removing, and you. Uh, we stood by your promise saying that the infrastructure bill would get passed, and now we are officially here. Senator Booker, it's always good to have a fellow bald man with me on stage. I think Senator Menendez and Joe D took all our hair. Yes, they did. But, uh, and also our executive director of NJ Transit and our commissioner of DOT. And also in the crowd, we have our newly Senate Majority Leader of the New Jersey Senate, Teresa Ruiz. But, <laughs> Teresa, come on up. Come on up, seriously. It's warmer if we, there's more of us. <laughs> Towns like Bloomfield benefit greatly from this infrastructure bill. Not only are we going to see an upgrade to our train station, as you can see, Bloomfield is a transit hub that is going, that has roughly 1,600 riders coming through these train stations every day. The Gateway Project is another huge plus that benefits the township. It also benefits myself at home because my wife is a commuter and she complains daily about the train commute. And also I want to mention the portal bridge as well. Bloomfield will also benefit from the water infrastructure funding that will come through this. Um, a couple years ago we got hit with improving all our lead lines and we've committed to having all our lead lines replaced by the end of 2023 and we are going to stick to that promise and this infrastructure funding is going to go a long way to us and finally just about eight weeks ago this whole area was underwater during hurricane ida so this flood resiliency resiliency money is going to be a huge benefit right now bloomfield has undertaken a study a storm water management study where we're going to recognize and realize how flood waters are flowing to the township and uh, this money will come through handily, and we are very excited about it. Um, I would like to welcome our, uh, we are very thankful here in Essex County to, and I learned from him, going to our legislators asking for money, our county executive, Joe D. All right. <laughs> and he's doing a very, very good job at that. You know, uh, to Senator Menendez and Senator Booker, like the, the mayor said, there's no doubt we have the best two senators right here that represent New Jersey and this country and we're just so v very lucky to get them because they're both fighters and for them to get the support for this infrastructure bill means so much here not only to Essex County not only to New Jersey but throughout the entire country you know we I've been county exec for 20 years Mike uh, that train station I think we've had at least 20 press conferences since I've been here I'm hoping with this infrastructure bill Ms president of a New Jersey Transit is that we can get the money to make sure that gets repaired the uh, way it should be. But this infrastructure means a lot to Essex County, to all 20 towns. We, uh, this county is the hub. Uh, we are definitely at a crossroad. We have everything right here. We have the roads. We have the bridges. Right here in Essex County, we have over 400 miles uh, of roadway here, and we have over 500 bridges here and there's about seven or eight of them that need to repair quickly and we're ready to go in the ground as soon as they give us the money but to senator menendez six uh is a bellwether what happens elsewhere and when we bring money back to essex uh senator booker and i we know it is well spent and it makes the case for why we should do this so thank you mr exec the mayor thank you uh, for your leadership uh, on lead pipe changes, on infrastructure, on so much that we've been fighting for. It's why we often come back to Bloomfield to make the case because you're leading the way at a local level and we're glad to bring firepower to that effort. Uh, I appreciate uh, DOT Commissioner Gutierrez Cacchetti being with us, who I know you'll hear from shortly, and New Jersey Transit President Kevin Corbett. Uh, and, and Kevin, you heard the county executive, so I'll echo that. So uh, anyhow. Uh, and if you're in Washington and these days uh, you have to be 
uh, in a struggle, in a fight to achieve something, uh, you couldn't have a better colleague to do that than Senator Cory Booker. Uh, Cory's ability uh, to convince, persuade, cajole, uh, and very often reach out to the other side is critical uh, these days. So uh, he is a big reason why we are here today. And I have to take a moment. You know, when I was in the New Jersey State Senate, I was the first and only Latino in the New Jersey State Senate. And it was lonely. Uh, trying to press the issues of a growing community in our state which has now exploded dramatically in population. Uh, but to witness that the first Latina majority leader of the New Jersey State Senate uh, in Senator Teresa Ruiz uh, is just a moment of great personal pride uh, because she is a fantastic senator first and foremost who has shown her abilities to lead on education and child care and the things that make a difference in our families' lives. And now that she will have the power of majority leader, I can just imagine what will happen uh, in the days ahead. So, uh, Madam Leader, congratulations. It's a great moment, a historic day. America's economy. In just a couple of hours, President Biden will sign the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act into law. The American people have been waiting for decades of this kind of large-scale investment in the 21st century infrastructure, and we're here to say it is finally happening. You know, I've always believed in the saying that there are no Republican bridges or Democratic roads. I will, however, say that the last president spent four years talking about a big game on infrastructure, but that's all that it was, talk. At the end of the day, President Trump cared more about building silly walls than sturdier bridges and 21st century tunnels. It took a Democratic president named Joe Biden and a Democratic House and Senate to get the job done. And now, American workers are going to get the job done. And when it comes to building back better, there is no shortage of work to do. Our roadways, railways, tunnels, bridges, ports, and airports used to be the envy of the world. That's not the case anymore. In fact, the World Economic Forum that does these ratings of nations doesn't even rank the U.S. transportation infrastructure in the top 10. As chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, I know that today's global economy is more competitive and interconnected than ever before. If we want to maintain our competitive edge over China, if we want more companies to invest in America, if we want the 21st century to be another American century, then we have to build the infrastructure our business and our workers need to win. The fact is, America infrastructure has suffered from decades of underinvestment. We are living off the greatest generation's investments, but we did nothing to build upon it, to improve it, to even maintain it. For too long, Washington's obsession with trickle-down economics has prioritized tax cuts for the wealthy instead of infrastructure investments that create opportunities for all. Well, that changes today. When President Biden signs this legislation into law, we will unleash transformative new investments in everything from roads and railways to drinking water to electric vehicle, infrastructure, and so much more. We're making the largest investment in public transit in history at nearly $90 billion. That's $39 billion in new investment, and the largest investment in passenger rail since the creation of Amtrak at $66 billion. This legislation will provide New Jersey alone with over $12 billion in guaranteed transportation and transit funding over the next five years. As the largest statewide transit network in the nation, New Jersey Transit will have access to billions of dollars for major upgrades, including right here in Bloomfield. The historic train station has served the surrounding community for over a century. But we need new upgrades to meet today's design and accessibility standards which is why the bill also includes $1.75 billion 
in dedicated competitive funding to improve ADA accessibility at transit stations. New Jersey Transit's five-year plans to modernize Bloomfield Station by raising platforms, expanding accessibility for those with disabilities, bringing the station into a state of good repair and improving safety and the customer experience is just in line with that effort. While these upgrades are still in the planning stage, this eventual improvements will solidify Bloomfield's designation as a transit-oriented development transit village and that leverages the station to drive greater revitalization in the community at large. We know that transit-oriented development spurs economic growth and economic opportunity. I think back to my time as mayor of Union City when I fought to get us a stop, get Union City a stop on the Hudson Bergen light rail line, which at that time was only an idea. They told me, no, it can't happen. No, it won't happen. No, having the Conrail Tunnel access just is too expensive. Well, we knew that getting that stop was about more than getting people from point A to point B. It was about sparing new development, attracting new businesses, and connecting workers to new jobs. And because I also happened to be a state senator at the time, I said, well, guess what? Union City doesn't get a station. This line doesn't move. At the end of the day, I don't know if it still is, but that station, for a long period of time, was the point of the highest uh, rate of passengers on the light rail system. And it unlocked enormous gateway. Look, when the Hudson Tunnel and the Portal Bridge came online at the dawn of the last century, of the 20th century, they were feats of modern engineering. But what was cutting edge in 1910 isn't cutting edge in 2021. Today, the Northeast Corridor is the most traveled rail corridor in the nation, and yet it hinges on rusty relics from the bygone era. We cannot afford to jeopardize the critical infrastructure underpinning a region that generates 20% of the gross domestic product of the United States. So we're pleased to say that with $30 billion set aside for the Northeast Corridor and $8 billion in guaranteed additional funding for the capital investment grants on top of the money that we'll be fighting for through the annual appropriations process, we're finally going to get Gateway done. This effort has been years in the making, and today we're thinking about all the hurdles we face getting here. During the Trump administration, the president's political vendetta against our state and our region led to needless delays and funding obstacles. They made up entire new policies with no foundation in law just to try and derail the most important infrastructure project in the entire country. And who can forget back in 2010 when former Governor Christie canceled the Hudson Tunnel projects after the federal government had already committed then in 2010 when three billion dollars was a lot of money three billion dollars it was just two years later that Superstorm Sandy we get this done let's not forget that infrastructure is also a quality of life issue and an economic justice issue, something that Senator Booker has driven home in the Senate. Here in New Jersey, households and communities of color are more likely, twice as likely, to rely on public transportation to make a living. And people who rely on public transportation spend more than 80% of their time commuting each and every day. For parents, a safer, smoother, swifter commute means spending more time where it matters the most, at home, making sure the kids have a healthy dinner and finish all their homework. That's precious time you can never get back. And traffic delays are just as painful for those who drive to work each day. We've included an extra $110 billion in this bill 
above the baseline level of projects that will repair and modernize our roadways, alleviate congestion, reduce smog and carbon pollution, and move people and goods more quickly throughout our economy. For New Jersey alone, there's nearly $8 billion in guaranteed funding to improve highways and repair outdated bridges, as well as billions of additional dollars that we can compete for. We're talking a lot about infrastructure and transportation today, but that's just really the tip of the iceberg of what this legislation does. The infrastructure bill also includes $55 billion for clean water projects, including $15 billion dedicated to replacing lead pipes and water lines throughout New Jersey and the nation. The mayor was leading in that regard here. The mayor of Newark is leading in that regard here. Well, now they have the firepower to finish the job. And we're fighting for more clean water funding in the reconciliation bill so that once and for all, we can say that when you turn on the tap, clean drinking water is a right to every citizen. We're also investing in environmental justice with $5 billion for cleaning up Superfund and brownfield sites that disproportionately threaten the well-being of our minority communities. New Jersey, unfortunately, is the highest rate of Superfund sites and brownfield sites in the nation. There's also $50 billion to improve resilience and prepare our communities for floods and other climate threats, and we've seen those from Sandy and Ida and elsewhere, while at the same time pouring an unprecedented $65 billion into modernizing our electric grids and building our electric vehicle charging infrastructure. After Superstorm Sandy and Hurricane Ida, New Jerseyans understand better than anyone we must invest in mitigation at the same time to reduce emissions. And because broadband internet in this day and age is not nice to have, but a must have, we have $65 billion to make sure every community from our inner cities to our most remote farm towns can get online. We saw it during the pandemic when you had to stay home. Not everybody had access to broadband. Not every child had the ability to be able to connect with their classroom. Not every person who had to work from home had that ability. They will when we finish implementing this bill. So I have been in public service for nearly four decades. I know history when I see it. And today will be remembered as a day that America begins to build back better. And in the coming days, Democrats will be working hard to deliver the rest of our agenda. We're fighting for a reconciliation bill that will cut taxes for middle class and working families, that will lead the largest effort to combat climate change in American history, that will lower the cost of prescription drugs for consumers, and keep working families ahead by making child care affordable. These investments, this is what grows the middle class that we're fighting for. And today is a historic day where we begin just that. Just very briefly, I know this is longer than I normally would, but we've got so much to talk about here and so much to rejoice in, but that people need to know. And, and all of this, of course, means we're going to put people to work. Each and every one of these projects puts people to work at great paying jobs. Simplemente quiero decir, hoy es un día histórico, una oportunidad de conocer los votos que el senador Booker y yo logramos en el Senado para tener una ley de infraestructura, una ley que va a mejorar nuestro sistema económico, una ley que va a permitir que esa infraestructura se realice en nuestras ciudades, en nuestros vecindarios, que va a traer oportunidades de agua limpia a nuestras comunidades, eliminar los tubos de plomo que contaminan nuestra juventud, asegurar que todo el mundo tenga acceso al Internet el mejor sistema de tránsito que para nuestra comunidad es gran parte de las personas que van a trabajar usan el tránsito público en fin en todo distinto bringing a lot today Joe but the person who helped me do that is Essex's own Cory Booker all right in honor of Joe D I'll be doing all my remarks in Italian <laughs> uh, there is no county executive in America it actually there's no county executive in all of North America that is better than Joe D. Maybe this young, one woman up in Saskatchewan gets close, but you are the best of the best, and I'm honored that you're my county executive. And yes, you heard it here. My favorite in all of America, 
Senate Majority Leader, I'm sorry Chuck Schumer, but my favorite Senate Majority Leader in all of America is Teresa Ruiz, and I'm so excited that she's making history here in our state. And of course, our Commissioner Scacchetti, I want to thank you for your steadfast leadership, your commitment, and truly making an extraordinary difference in our state every single day. And who does not love New Jersey Transit? Our Executive Director, uh, Kevin, thank you for your leadership as well. All right, folks, you heard it from Bob. I'll say it very succinctly. New Jersey, this is a big deal. This is a big freaking deal. There has been no infrastructure bill in our lifetime as big and as impactful to the state of New Jersey as what we have right here. We are bringing billions and billions of dollars to our state to affect everything the eye can see. Our roads, our bridges, our lakes, our streams, our rails, our tunnels, every aspect of New Jersey's land will be affected by this bill. And thanks to the power of our senior senator, Bob Menendez, my friend, uh, I cannot tell you how grateful I am to have a partner like him. New Jersey, we're punching above our weight. We are one of the best states for bringing home dollars here to New Jersey. And I'll tell you this, this is more than just about repairing our aged infrastructure. It's about saving lives, as our resiliency work will do. It's about saving lives, about cleaning up dirty drinking water. It's about saving lives and making sure that the air we're breathing is cleaner. No more terrible traffic that makes us broil up in idling. We're going to reduce that. We're going to make sure our ports are cleaner. We're going to make sure we remediate these horrific Superfund sites in our state. This is a big deal for every New Jersey. We should all, I don't care what your political specter, spe, uh, background is, for every New Jerseyan, this is resources for us. And as Bob said, this is going to create jobs, literally thousands and thousands of jobs from Cape May to Sussex County. This is going to be an economic boom for our state as we make New Jersey better every single day over the coming decade. And projects that should have been done years ago, like the Gateway Project, making sure that our tunnels and our rail lines, that we're relieving the incredible stress upon this region's overburdened infrastructure, this is nothing short of transformative. Finally, New Jersey, a state that gives a tremendous amount of money from Washington but hasn't gotten our fair share. This is one of those times that we in New Jersey can have some pride, that we are bringing home the resources necessary to make a transformative change. Now, Bob went through a lot of this, but I, I just got to mention it. And maybe, uh, Mayor Venezia, it's, it's, it's my uh, time as a mayor. You all know we have a Burgermeister behind me, a big, bold, beneficent, bald Burgermeister behind me. I'm sorry, I can't help alliter alliteration with bees. My name is Booker after all. But from broadband to ports and waterways, to the greatest airport in all of America, Newark Airport, from our power grids, to billions of dollars for resiliency money, for clean school buses for our children, we are seeing money and resources coming into this state. And so I just want to conclude with this. I've heard infrastructure talk now for years and years. I've been your senator for eight years. We have had countless press conferences calling for infrastructure investments. We've done not one, not two, I would say a dozen, half dozen at least, press conferences in the Gateway Tunnels. Time and time again, we have said we're calling for this, we're fighting for this. We've heard presidents before this president promise infrastructure, 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 but now we are finally delivering. And if there's one thing I want to say, New Jersey, on top of this, we are not done yet. We are not done yet. The Biden agenda is a one-two punch. The first punch is all about this infrastructure that will change our state everywhere the eye can see. But the second part is about investing in people in New Jersey. 
It's about driving down your costs, your cost of childcare, your cost of raising a family, your cost of your health care. The number two punch is all about people and investing in the people of our state. It's about lowering your taxes, as Bob and I were just talking about, the state and local tax deduction. It's about New Jersey getting its fair share and making life easier for every New Jersey and lowering costs, creating jobs, and investing in people. That's what we're fighting for. That's what we're delivering. And the best is yet to come. I am grateful now that I get to bring up the great 50 states, for crying out loud, New Jersey's got the best, DOT, DOT Commissioner uh, Diane Scacchetti. Thank you so much. Thank you, Senator. Good morning. So in the spirit of at least a little humor, um, Mayor and Senator Booker, my father sported the same hairstyle. Um, and what he would say is God only made a few perfect heads and on the rest he put hair. to happen to our funding year in and year out as we pass continuing resolutions but never get to the place where we have strong funding to plan a future just like in any part of the business we do we have to know what is is going to be available to us to be successful in delivering what is the underpinning of our economy which is transportation so let me put some perspective around what the senators have said uh, as you know, there are so many transportation organizations in the country that follow this. One in particular is the American Road, uh, Road Builders, American Transportation and Road Builders Association, who put together a very nice map, and I'm sure if you go on their website, you can see it. And on the map, it has different shades of green that focus on the different funding levels for each state. Um, and so you look at the darkest green. The darkest green represents states that are getting over $10 billion. It's California. It's Texas, it's Florida, it's Georgia, it's New York, it's Pennsylvania, and it's New Jersey. And what I want you to do is think about that, that we may be small, but we're mighty, right? We sit in a place that connects the, high, the largest financial markets in this country. They can't live without the infrastructure that we deliver in New Jersey. Whether it's moving people or moving commercial goods, this state is a key point for the success of transportation. And so it's really hard to, to overemphasize the importance of what our two senators have done for the state of New Jersey in, a, in, a, in delivering funds that have a five-year life to them. But the other important thing that they did, which, which we learned and we always learn from our, our work in previous administrations, is we didn't do something that was called shovel ready, which I know is all on your mind. You're looking for the list of projects that are gonna get done. They were much smarter and came up with shovel worthy. And that means today we don't have to rush to go out and spend this money in a minute and just build what's ready. We can thoughtfully look across the state of New Jersey and make sure that what we are delivering serves a diverse community and is inclusive in making certain that the money that we get in is spread throughout the state. It serves our urban areas, it serves our rural areas. And DOT stands firm in its commitment to support other areas of government that will help deliver a better water infrastructure, that will help us with broadband. The best part of government is that we should use the resources we have to work together. And the funding that has been delivered to New Jersey to make it both fairer and stronger and move forward is what we can work with across our departments to be successful and to move quickly to provide to those that serve the state of New Jersey as our residents, as our employees, or as families who have decided to settle here, that we serve them in a way that makes them stronger and makes this the state where they choose to live and raise their families. I can't be more grateful to the two of you gentlemen. I know the mayor and the county executive and Kevin and I uh, know that the work in the next six months or so to make sure we launch all of this work and get this money programmed properly will be tough, but we've been ready. We've been ready for years. Um, we're excited about it and we will look forward to being able to deliver more of that information to you as the bill gets signed uh, later today and we get our plans in place uh, for the projects to come. Thank you very much. You're here. You want to introduce Kevin? 
Well, not. Do I have to? No, I'm kidding. No, my partner in crime, my partner in crime on a daily basis, uh, Kevin Corbett, is the CEO and president of New Jersey Transit. So for me, uh, you know, Kevin has one of the tougher jobs. It is one of the strongest public facing jobs in New Jersey. It is something that so many of you experience every day. And so I couldn't ask for a better partner to stand side by side with as his board chair and as commissioner of DOT in trying to make sure that we properly serve and address the needs of all of our residents in the state of New Jersey. So Kevin. Uh, thank you, Diane, and certainly, as you know, the feeling is mutual, and uh, uh, senators, uh, and particularly also uh, on the uh, state level, it is so great to have someone in the legislature who really knows transit. I can tell the public that all the, the legislators behind me, and to say nothing of the county exec, um, there, there's transit issues, large or small, that affect their community, their constituents. They and their staff are right on us in New Jersey Transit, and we really appreciate that. It shows that they really know and care you know, the challenges we have. And there is nothing uh, that could make us happier. When we came in, Diane and I came in four years ago, New Jersey Transit did not have a five-year capital plan. And, and there are a lot of wonderful people there. They knew that these stations were in bad, you know, in bad shape. But they, the, the, the comments were made, well, why, why even bother? We're not going to get the funding. Why put it? So we, you know, with the governor's blessing, we came up with a roadmap. And we have a five-year capital plan, $17 billion, of which $5 billion is still unfunded. It's an unconstrained capital plan. Now with this money, we are going to be able to really implement and bring us into a first-class system that we could be equal to any in the world. And that, that is the importance of that is for people in the transit industry where we've sort of been playing the transit hunger games, this, this, this bill getting coming through for us puts an end to having to have those transit hunger games where you're fighting for uh, every dollar and triaging constantly. So uh, the one thing I would uh, say uh, to the county executive, this station has been on the list, and now with this money, we're at 30% design. So the next press conference won't be just talking about getting funding. It's going to be a groundbreaking. Amen. All right. <laughs> All right, man. And, and, you, and you can thank those two senators. We just do the delivery. They're the people who delivered it. And uh, the other thing is to make sure that we are accountable. Transit systems like ours, we are the largest in the, uh, statewide in the country. It's the most densely populated state in the country. As much as uh, Diane and I might like transportation, as, as Senator Menendez